Hello, I'm Jennifer Ellis Schutz of Empowered Health, which is an online private functional health and transformational coaching practice and Wellness Code Academy, where I offer online courses and training programs for both clients and health and wellness professionals. Welcome to this week's video blog, which is all about the intricate connection between circadian rhythm, mitochondrial health, and, ed and energy levels, and what you can do to optimize all of yours. So in the spirit of empowered healing and life optimization, every month I tackle a different theme, and each week I explore a different topic within that theme from either a client or a health professional perspective. I share insight on an array of topics such as all things functional health, mindset, personal responsibility, the mind-body connection, bioenergetic medicine, business development, and more. Be sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a week's featured video, as well as to my email list to receive your free action guide, which is 10 tips for increasing energy and brain function in 10 minutes a day or less. And now it's time to dive in to this week's topic. To begin, it's first important to know when it comes to resolving chronic fatigue, conventional medicine has little to nothing to offer. Standard lab testing only shows remarkable findings approximately 5% of the time in terms of figuring out the root causes of chronic fatigue. The five main treatment options include rule out major disease such as cancer, exercise therapy, antidepressants or anti-anxiety medications, stimulants. Note, it's very important to know that while taking medications may offer temporary improvement and may definitely be needed in some scenarios, they can often drive dysfunction deeper into the body if the root causes of fatigue are not properly identified and addressed, which as I stated in the second video within this series is a multifaceted process. And then there's cognitive behavioral therapy. Nowhere within the conventional medical setting will significant enough, if any attention at all, be given to guiding you through a step-by-step -step process of optimizing mitochondrial health and resetting your circadian clock. Additionally, it's important to know that the adrenal fatigue theory behind chronic fatigue and low cortisol output is simply outdated and not accurate in most cases. One exception of this would be Addison's disease. When cortisol levels drop off and chronic exhaustion sets in, it's rarely because the adrenals are too fatigued to produce cortisol, but rather a compensatory mechanism of the body to protect itself from various stressors and thus a purposeful downregulation of cortisol production. And this is right in alignment with chronic cell danger response mode, which will cause cellular energy production to be downregulated. Some of the hallmark signs and symptoms of low energy production include frequent daytime fatigue, but often tired, but wired at night. Brain fog, easily mentally fatigued after cognitive-based tasks, such as reading and studying. Prone to anxiety and depression. Gut issues, post-exertional malaise, chronic body aches and pains, much like fibromyalgia, non-restorative sleep, strong sugar cravings and a need to eat frequently, low stress resilience and easily overwhelmed by life's demands. This said, resetting one's circadian clock and optimizing sleep are both super critical components in the grand scheme of mitochondrial health and restoring one's cellular energy production system for five primary reasons. The first, sleep is the mother of all medicines and the most potent antioxidant and detoxifier the body has. During deep sleep is when our bodies work on clearing toxins the most, especially within our brains. Without ample amounts of restorative sleep, our mitochondria become overwhelmed by toxins. Number two, the optimal function of every system and biochemical process in our body depends on a balanced circadian rhythm. Our mitochondria depend on all other systems to be doing their jobs 
in order for them to be doing their jobs properly. Number three, lack of restorative sleep is one of the most common triggers of chronic cell danger response mode, which causes mitochondria to shift from energy producing mode into defense mode, which will cause a down regulation in all regenerative functions with energy production being the top at the top of the list. Some of the other things that happen as a result of lack of restorative sleep and going into defense mode include, but are not limited to, low NAD, NAD plus levels, which leads to a situation known as pseudo hypoxia, which is when the body perceives low oxygen status, which will trigger a stress response. Low levels of NAD plus are also associated with impaired fat burning and blood sugar regulation, impaired immune function, impaired DNA repair and cell regeneration, accelerated aging, hormone dysregulation, reduced energy stores in the brain, neurotransmitter production impairment, impairment of the endocannabinoid system, impaired digestion and assimilation of nutrients from the foods we eat, and the list goes on. Number four, we are natural beings governed by the laws of the natural universe. When we fall out of sync with the natural circadian rhythm of the universe, the rise of the sun and the, uh, and the setting of the sun and the moon and everything, our bodies, minds, and spirits suffer greatly. We are less resilient. We're more prone to illness and therefore not able to be the best and healthiest versions of ourselves. And in this state, it's difficult, if not possible, to cultivate a mindset for healing and in personal growth heal our bodies, and thus show up in our lives the way we need and want to show up. Number five, disrupted sleep and chronic fatigue are two sides of the same coin linked together via the circadian rhythm. When you experience chronic fatigue, whether you realize it or not, your circadian rhythm is definitely not optimized. It may seem like you're getting a full night's sleep, but on some level outside of your conscious awareness, the sleep is not deep and restorative or for long enough periods of time. Or you may be totally aware of very poor sleep quality and an unbalanced day and night cycle. All this said, it's important to know that exponentially growing numbers of adults and kids for that matter are somewhere on the spectrum of struggling with chronic fatigue, low stamina, brain fog, depressed mood, and quite possibly a growing list of other life altering health conditions. And what is the ripple effect of these symptoms on one's life. I wonder if you can relate to any of the following. Making it through a day is often a struggle. You usually can't wait for the day to end, so just so you can get home and rest on the couch, like, oh, thank God the day's over. Daily life tasks, simple tasks, such as grocery shopping, making dinner and doing laundry, can often seem like monumental undertakings and lead to total overwhelm and stress mode. Having little to no energy at the end of each day left over for much of a social life or pursuing personal interests. And the ripple effect of this is lack of joy, passion, and fulfillment in one's life. Rigorous workouts or possibly exercise of any kind drains the mind and body even more. One often feels unmotivated and lacks the energy to show up in one's life the way they need and want to, or struggles with depression and anxiety or other mental health challenges. Experiences with sluggish cognitive performance and not being at the top of one's game, personally or professionally. Overall low stress resilience and easily overwhelmed and because of this, there's lack of patience with one's kids and other people in one's life. All of these experiences that I just listed are a manifestation of reduced cellular energy production. And this is when our mitochondria are, are simply unable to convert the nutrients from the foods we eat into usable energy in the form of ATP. So my journey to recover from life robbing and very, often very, very disabling, crippling chronic fatigue and many other health challenges armed me with powerful wisdom about what primes the body for illness and what's required to restore cellular function and thus reclaim one's energy and one's life. Because without energy and good health, there is no life, right? 
So I now have a deep understanding of the primary underpinnings of the development of chronic fatigue and other complex chronic invisible illnesses. And at the top of this list of primary underpinnings, which are also at the top of the list of chronic cell danger response triggers, are a broken circadian clock and lack of restorative sleep, as I've stated several times now. Without these two critical factors in place, no amount of top-line supplements, biohacks, or other healing interventions will make much of a difference, if at all, in one's energy levels and quest to optimize physical, mental, emotional, spiritual health. So when it comes to taking 100% responsibility for our health and our lives and optimizing mitochondrial health, one of the first steps in the process is to make it a top priority to reset your circadian clock and optimize sleep. And what can you do to make this happen? Or what can you do to help your clients make this happen? Well, within the Wellness Code, within the Wellness Code Practitioner Certification Program, I teach an entire unit on circadian rhythm and mitochondrial health. But since it's not possible for me to present all that information within this video blog or even this series, I would like to begin with a list of practical strategies that you can begin doing right now. And if you're a practitioner, that you can begin to guide your clients to do right now. But before presenting these strategies, it's first important to know that there are five major environmental cues that serve to regulate circadian rhythm, and they are light, nutrition, temperature, movement, and connection with nature. A balanced circadian rhythm requires that we optimize each one of these. This said, here is a list of seven of what I feel to be the most important strategies that anybody can begin with right now on their own with little to no money and little to no guidance by a healthcare professional. Number one, the first strategy is to get 15, at least 15, but preferably 30 minutes of bright natural sunlight at the beginning of each day within an hour, but preferably 30 minutes of waking. This is important because by exposing your eyes to bright light early in the morning, you signal to your brain that it's time to suppress melatonin production, which is the sleep hormone that makes us sleepy. And in response, the brain increases cortisol and orexin production. As was mentioned in a previous video, orexin is the main neuropeptide needed for wakefulness, alertness, and focus. Morning sunlight also warms up the body, facilitating our natural thermal regulation process. If natural sunlight is not available, then consider a natural light box that emits at least 10,000 lux of bright white light. There are many of these lights on the market, some which can be quite costly, but I use and recommend the Happy Light by Verilux, which can be purchased on Amazon for under $100. Number two, block out or reduce as much blue and green light exposure after sunset. This is coming from tech devices. You'll do this by using blue blacking computer and phone applications, candlelight and amber light bulbs instead of fluorescent lighting, and glasses such as these that block both blue and green light. Blue and green light at night alters the expression of circadian gene clocks and disrupts the whole hormonal symphony that relies on proper circadian signaling that comes from nature's light and dark or sun and moon cycles. Number three, be sure your bedroom is pitch dark while you sleep. Use blackout curtains or a face mask if need be. Even a tiny amount of light, as low as five lumens, which indicates the level of intensity of the light for just one minute, can throw the entire circadian rhythm out of balance. This amount of light or more is present just from street lights outside the window or a night light in the hallway. Studies have shown that people who have even just a little bit of light exposure while they sleep at night have a 65% increased chance of developing depression after two years. And because of this, light sources anywhere in the house where they could emit light into the bedrooms where people are sleeping should be used only during waking hours. Number four, and we're almost done here, 
A diet that does not support optimal digestion and gut health, brain health, blood sugar regulation, and inflammation control is indeed a cell danger response trigger and will disrupt one circadian rhythm. I'll be going into much greater detail on nutrition for optimizing mitochondrial health in a future video blog series. In the meantime, I suggest following the simple principle of JERF, just eat real food. Number five, avoid eating at least two to three hours before bedtime and have at least a 12 hour fasting window between your last bite of food and your first meal the next day. During periods of fasting, and particularly when we are sleeping, cells go into autophagy where they release nutrients for recycling and removing damaged or unnecessary cellular structures. This process is greatly supported by a healthy circadian rhythm. Eating too close to bedtime and with not a long enough fasting window thwarts this process. It's important to know and remember that if one has poor metabolic health, however, the body will have trouble regulating blood sugar doing this type of fasting too quickly. And because of this, it's really important to go slowly and progressively in order to avoid hypoglycemia, which is a blood sugar crash. Number six, be as active during the day as possible. Get exercise during daylight hours and do calming activities after sunset. Movement and activity are synergistic with light, temperature, and meal timing, and they amplify the circadian signal. For this reason, exercise and more demanding activities should be done during the day to reinforce the daytime signal. Lack of activity during the day and being too sedentary is just as disruptive to the circadian rhythm as too much blue and green light at night, coming from tech bar. And lastly, number seven, one's final meal of the day should have a larger quantity of protein content than earlier meals do in order to cover the overnight fast. Unlike fats and carbohydrates, which can be stored in the body, the amino acid pool is constantly being recycled and replenished by incoming nutrients or by the body breaking down its own tissue. If one does not eat enough protein for their last meal, which is most likely dinner for most people before bed, the body will likely be woken up during the night. Okay, so this was a bit of a long video, but this does bring me to the end of this list of seven practical strategies for optimizing circadian rhythm and mitochondrial health and the end of this video blog. Thank you so much for watching. If you're interested in personalized coaching services, you can connect with me at www.empoweredtoheal.com. And if you're a health professional seeking to improve client outcomes and up-level your business, be sure to check out my flagship certification program, The Wellness Code, which can be found at www.empoweredtoheal forward slash wellness code. Until next time, all my best to you.